The film starts off with a man running away from something. Then he trips and falls. Someone comes after him with an axe and ends him. Then we see a car moving down the highway. Maya and Ryan decide that they need to eat before getting to Portland and therefore take a turn. Little do they realize that this turn is going to be their last one. They get distracted and almost crash the car. Ryan seems to have asthma, so Maya gives him his inhaler. Then they realize that they're in the middle of nowhere and they arrive at Venus. They arrive at the spot and everyone seems to examine them. Another couple at the diner overhears them and realizes that it's their anniversary. Then they reveal that it's their anniversary too. Maya reveals that they're not married and that they have just been dating for five years. This woman seems to be a little annoyed by that and asks Ryan why he had delayed it so much. They see a poster about someone that went missing. Turns out he was some big corporate finance guy that arrived at the diner and just vanished. Ryan jokingly says that he hopes that the man didn't have a turkey melt and the woman reveals otherwise. They realize that their car has broken down and get jump scared by this man. The man seems to be a mechanic, and they explain how they will have to stay the night since they're far from the town, and that they need certain parts to fix the car. Ryan calls it bullshit and explains how the mechanic is trying to scam them. Maya tries to calm him down and convinces the mechanic to go ahead with the work. The waitress agrees to drive them to a place where they can stay the night, and these kids arrive in front of them telling them that the Lord will set them free. Then they hand over some flyers and leave. The waitress drives the couple to the spa and bids them goodbye. The couple settles down for the night and Maya alerts the owners about their stay. Someone seems to be watching her from the woods. They talk for a bit and get intimate with each other. Someone knocks at the door and interrupts them. Turns out it's a creepy girl and she asks them if someone by the name Tamara is here. They tell her to GTFO and she ominously stands there for a while before she ultimately leaves. Then she continues to stand in the middle of the street and then disappears. They talk about marriage, and Ryan's inhaler seems to be missing, and Maya says that she left it back in the car. Maya reveals that she's hungry, so Ryan agrees to go and get it. Maya hears a sudden noise, and we hear footsteps of someone running around. Someone knocks at the door, and Maya questions if it's Ryan but gets no response. The banging gets louder, and she peeks outside, just to realize that there's nobody there. Suddenly, she hears the same girl from before asking if Tamara is here, and Maya tells her to leave. Another round of this nonsense happens, and we see someone walking behind her. Maya then realizes that her phone is missing, and soon finds it. Then she hears someone humming, and decides to investigate, and she opens the tap for some reason, and realizes that it's broken. She calls the technician and reports it, but someone seems to be hiding in the bushes. She gets inside, lights a cigar, and listens to the strangest music on the player. Ryan arrives at his car and tries to grab his inhaler from the car, but gets jump-scared by the mechanic. The mechanic assumes that Ryan was a car thief, and he explains himself. Back home, Maya plays the piano and hears the floor creaking, but we see that someone is sitting right behind her. Ryan comes across the people from the intro and politely tells them that he has to leave since Maya is back home. This woman here offers Ryan the same leaflets from before, and he ultimately gets his food from there. We pan back onto Maya, who doesn't realize that Baghead is a pervert, but when she realizes it, he just disappears. Power at the crib goes out, and now with a flashlight, Maya continues to hear the creaking from before. Eventually, she gets jump-scared by a woman wearing a baby face mask. She runs away and manages to hide in a room. The door opens and turns out it was just Ryan. They turn on the power switch and the power's back. Maya seems spooked and explains the situation to him, but Ryan thinks that she was hallucinating. Maya seems confused, and Ryan determines that it's probably from the thing she was smoking earlier. They hear knocking again and see the same woman standing in the middle of the road. And this time, Ryan has had enough of the crap. Creepy girl runs away. They have dinner, but realize that maybe this ain't sauce after all. Ryan locks the back door, and Maya locks the front. But someone axes right through the door, and they lock themselves inside a room as the man tries to break in. Babyface plays the piano, and someone tries to break the door. The man faces Ryan directly, and the crew just leaves. Their phones seem to be destroyed, and someone detonates an explosive when they try to reach for the bike. We see who really did it, and they lock themselves inside. They manage to crawl through a vent and hear creaking from above. 
Maya then steps on a nail and tries to make any noise. We hear creaking from above, but Ryan helps Maya quietly get out her misery and gets her stitched up. They run to the other cabin, but Ryan trips and his inhaler falls off. They get inside and we see that someone's already inside with them. They grab a weapon from there. Ryan decides to watch the door while Maya watches the window. Babyface jump scares Maya and the baghead grabs her through the window. Ryan manages to pew pew baghead and Babyface runs away too. They move with the shotgun and try to get inside. Ryan hears a noise and thinks it's the intruders immediately takes a shot, not knowing that it's the owner of the place. They grab his keys and try to get away in his car, but the baghead has other plans. Ryan's leg seems to be stuck from the collision and he tells Maya to escape. Ryan manages to get out through the front window and goes further into the woods. Maya seems to be getting hunted by Babyface, but manages to hide from her. Then she notifies the police. The call connects, but the cops can't hear her. The cops realize that something is wrong, and Maya comes face to face with the man from the intro. Fortunately, she's able to give the location to the cops and runs away from there. Baghead catches up to her and knocks her down. Ryan comes looking for Maya, and Baghead hears this, but his asthma starts kicking in. Baghead hears Ryan struggling and immediately starts making his way over to him. Luckily, he walks away, and Ryan eventually manages to catch Dollface from behind. He threatens her and asks where Maya is, and the Dollface starts emoting and laughs erratically. I don't know what he was thinking, because obviously, Baghead hears the commotion and knocks him out. Now we're back at the house, and they wake up to realize that they have been tied to chairs, and finally stabs Ryan in the gut, and finally Maya. The both of them seem to be dead, and they hear sirens in the distance and get out of there immediately. Then we move on to Maya, who wakes in a hospital bed.